back to Italy. It's Hello. always a pleasure to see you playing here in my country. Yeah. And uh, you know that uh, yesterday also the national TV news talked about your concerts here in Italy. Really? So it was, yeah, know. it was a great okay. surprise. Really? <laughs> so, yes. you are uh, currently touring to promote uh, your 10th studio album, World Kings, yeah. that has gathered largely positive reviews in the rock press. Uh, mm -hmm. By the way, the, um, the riff from uh, for War of Kings uh, comes from you, right? <laughs> the, the riff, the riff of, of uh, the title track. Yeah, a little bit more than the riff, actually. Oh, okay. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, there was this uh, idea that I had from the beginning, but we changed it around a little bit. Dave Cobb came out with some ideas, and and Joey, of course, made the, the melody and the lyrics. Okay. Uh, War of Kings was labeled by many as uh, the best uh, Europe album from the reunion. Yeah. Uh, what's the band's feeling about your latest achievement after some months of touring we, we, right now? We are really proud of this album and uh, there was ma many uh, different things that came together really well. Uh, one thing was the, that we found Dave Cobb and he agreed to, to work with us and uh, he was a fantastic producer. Uh, and we really had a good time with him in the studio and he had really good ideas. Mm -hmm. uh, I know it's always difficult to, to choose among your own babies, but <laughs> is there yeah. any specific track that uh, for you stands out both lyrically and uh, uh, musically? Yeah. Well, of course, uh, War of Kings song and uh, Second Day I, I like very much. Uh, also California 405. Yeah. yeah and, uh, yeah, what's your favorite? I know, I know which one. You know which yeah. one? <laughs> we play it tonight. So, yeah, I hope so. Yeah. You're gonna play it, right? Yeah. Which is it? Do you, you tell remember? Me. <laughs> it's nothing to you, of course. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah that's a good song too. Yeah, it's damn, so damn sexy. Yeah. <laughs> sexy? Is it yeah, sexy? It's, it's yeah, sexy, yeah. yeah. That's my own opinion. Yeah. Not only mine, actually. There are yeah. a few fans that really dig this song. Yeah, that song came together. Uh, Really funny. Uh, we we had a jam in, in the, sometime when we rehearsed, and Joey uh, recorded the jam okay. with, on his telephone. Mm -hmm. Then he sent it to me and said, "John, can you make a demo out of this?" Yeah. Well, I'm trying to listen to this. <laughs> what the fuck is going on here because the sound was so bad uh -huh. on his telephone. Okay. But then I made a demo out of it. Really? Yeah. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, while uh, touring on your own, you're also playing some gigs with Scorpions in France. Yeah. And there was uh, the first gig in Lille, and I think the atmosphere was really amazing because it, it was a great response from uh, the rock fans, especially yeah. after the terrible uh, events yeah, in yeah, Paris. Yeah. And I could see also that uh, the Scorpion fans really welcome you on stage yeah. and were really impressed by your performance. Yeah, I think we do have a similar audience, so yeah, it's a great Yeah, audience. it's uh, yeah. more or less similar. Yeah. And uh, how your uh, experiences, the specific um, gigs, uh, especially considering uh, the delicate circumstances in which they are taking place? Oh, well, there, uh, there was discussions uh, before we mm -hmm. went ahead to do this. Uh, we, we didn't know if Scorp Scorpius maybe want to cancel the whole tour, but many bands canceled their yeah, tours yeah. in France. But uh, I was hoping that we'd, we'd still be doing it, uh, and Scorpius said, yeah, a thousand percent we're going to do it. And, and I think it's a good thing, because the worst thing is to uh, let things like that, these horrible events, uh, affect yeah. you, because, yeah. and also, Stuff like that can happen wherever, yeah, you know. So you, we can't go around and being scared of things like that. Sure. Just I let agree. life go on. I agree. Yeah. Um, when you are backstage after a show, what makes you say, "Oh, guys, there was a night to remember"? Is it more about a technical aspect or more about the emotional one? A uh, little bit of both, but mostly it's. Uh, how the audience was. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Really? like last night in the Pratton was fantastic. Mm -hmm. But it's a Friday night, and Friday night is always different than a Thursday night or a Wednesday night because yeah, yeah. <laughs> they have a couple of beers and the crowd. Everybody can try and yeah. get strong cooking. Okay. Yeah. Um, in August this year, you won uh, the Afterblooded Rock Burnen, which yeah. is a Swedish um, music prize yeah. in the best hard rock and metal band of the year category. Yeah. And how is your connection to Sweden now? Because I mm. I remember reading in some interviews that Sweden didn't always love you. 
Oh, the press, you mean? The, yeah. Yeah, the yeah. The thing is, uh, with Rock Bjorn and spe especially, excuse me, I just had lunch. <laughs> uh, uh, it's uh, the the readers of that uh, paper that votes, so it's the people's choice. So mm -hmm. that's very special, I think. Mm -hmm. Instead of when you get a Grammy or something, mm -hmm. there's a record company executives in a jury that uh, decides who's the best. Mm -hmm. So it's okay. more important when it's the people's choice, I think. Okay. I saw the, um, uh, when you got the prize, the, the bear on stage, it yeah. was really <laughs> it's bothering the paper. you. And <laughs> especially <laughs> <laughs> and yes. the headlines was, I almost started crying. John Levin says. Uh, really? <laughs> really? Everybody, really John? Did you almost start crying? Well, not really. Because I <laughs> heard also that only John Naro was quite sure that you're gonna yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, win yeah. this it's, it's prize. True, yeah. He, yeah. He, he said before, well, we're gonna win, but... Because uh, you are the best, yeah, he said. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that doesn't really matter sometimes, it, it, because uh, some other band that's not very good can win because mm. people may maybe make the wrong choice. Uh -huh. And so me, make a oh, well, let's go there and have some beers and have fun. We're not going to win anyways. <laughs> but then when they, I, I noticed during the night that they were really concerned. Well, you guys don't go anywhere. You have to. Oh, sit so there. the winners were announced during the night. You didn't know before. No. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. So we had one special guy from this magazine, he was a guide for us and he came back, to, we sat at the restaurant close by and he, don't go anywhere guys. <laughs> so then I started thinking, well, why is this so concerned? <laughs> oh, so you started to understand something. Yeah, a little something. bit, but I was really surprised though. Cool. Yeah. And instead in November, Euro picked up another prize, the best comeback of the year award mm -hmm. at the classic Rock and Roll of Honor in London. And okay. you performed four songs in front of other legendary rock artists. Mm -hmm. And you were introduced with these words. When Europe came back, they wanted little respect. Now they got it. Mm -hmm. So the comeback is complete. Yeah, yeah. And uh, do you feel nowadays a different um, attitude towards the band from the rock press and the other musicians? Uh, a little bit, especially from the from uh, media or press, uh, because uh, before it was always oh, that one song band yeah. with a fine account and shit like that. Uh, and uh, but now I think they are uh, really understanding that we are a hardworking band that uh, keeps coming up with great classic albums. Cool. Yeah. Great. Um, in April this year, you toured the US for the first time in ten years. Mm -hmm. And how was the response? How did you feel to get back? It was back fantastic. It was really fantastic. Uh, uh, we we did uh, mainly the East Coast uh, that time, and, and the response was fantastic. We did some festivals, and we did uh, our own shows at uh, uh, House, House of Blues shows, mm -hmm. and, stuff. And, and we're going back now in, in January to, um, to the West Coast. So yeah. it's going to be really exciting. And uh, is it, is there still a, um, a difference balancing uh, the choice between uh, all the new songs when you play in the U.S.? It's uh, always uh, difficult for us to, yeah, <laughs> to, to choose because we want to play new songs, uh, and of course we want to play some old songs too. But it's really hard to. I think especially when we go back to America because they haven't really followed us uh, mm -hmm. for like, the uh, latest the albums yeah. like Italy or, or in mm -hmm. Europe has. Uh, so we're probably going to play more all the songs in America okay. and blend in some new songs. Yeah. Uh, the final candle was uh, recently used uh, in the Geico's advertising yeah. campaign yeah. and uh, reached number one in the Billboard uh, mm -hmm. uh, top commercials, mm -hmm. which tracks the most popular songs used in the U.S. as parents. Mm -hmm. And by joining this commercial, did you also want to get the U.S. audience more familiar with the band again, sort of? Yeah, or, that, uh, we have to show people in America and that uh, and Europe as well. There's still people coming out to me. Is it still got, you guys still playing? Yeah. yeah, we have been playing for quite some time. Yeah, <laughs> and, and especially, <laughs> yeah. And especially in America. I, I think they oh that that eighties band. Uh, they, what happened to those guys? They they're gone now. But uh, we have so we have to keep showing that we are still yeah. around and. Uh, Especially in America, and, and the Geico commercial has been a great, uh, great response. Thing. Yeah, yeah. It's a winning move. Yeah, <laughs> I think. Yeah. I hear it is playing all the time. Great. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, next year will mark the 30th anniversary of the final countdown, the album that changed everything. Mm -hmm. Are you planning a celebratory yeah, tour we'll, like you did with yeah. the Wings of Tomorrow and uh, any chance for Italy to be included? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I can't say much, but we are. You can't. <laughs> because I, I'm not really sure. Uh, there are uh, some some uh, dates already in the uh, works, and uh, so we're we're doing something for the fun and countdown. Okay, yeah. nothing more than that you can tell us. <laughs> no, because we, okay. they are booking all everything. It's all being planned right now, so uh -huh. I don't really know. Um, one last uh, question, John. Uh, discussion about Europe are always very animated uh, among rock fans. Mm -hmm. On one hand, uh, is, it is said that Europe is one of the few bands that has never repeated itself and always tries to trace a new track with every album. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, it's said that doing so, the band has lost its trademark and uh, becoming uh, confusing and less recognizable. Yeah. What's your thought about it? Uh, I like the first point of view. Uh, I think the, the most boring thing with, with uh, artists or, or bands is when they keep repeating themselves all over and over again. If you want to listen to all your stuff, you just go back and listen to... You have the records, just yeah, listen to them. They are already there. Yeah, they're already there, so uh, we don't want to do the same album over and over again. That's too boring. We have to keep pushing ourselves. That's what I like. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, thank you so much, John, for thank your you. time. And uh, would you like to send a message to Rock Rebel magazine and uh, the Italian fans in general? Well, uh, overall, thank you very much for hanging out there and uh, being following us for all these years. Uh, and uh, rock on! And get ready for a really warm welcome. <laughs> <laughs> right, thank thank you. you so much, John.